All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Um, try a little something different today and uh, talk about uh, where my railroad sits in the real world. It's, um, I guess you could call it proto lanced. Um, there are um, elements of it that I've borrowed from the real world, but uh, other than just obvious compression, I've, I've, I've moved some other things around and invented a few things too. So um, just to kind of start off, I was going to show you, um, this is Richmond, Virginia. Um, Richmond at one time had um, five different railroads operating uh, in, in and out of it, um, several north-south, several east-west. Um, so the city of Richmond is here. The James River comes through the city like this. It generally runs east-west, but right through here it runs north-south. And the old seaboard airline uh, main line ran parallel to the river here. Um, not It was not a riverfront route. Um, so Main Street Station is here. Um, the CNO was on one side uh, through here, and it joins with this one. Well, I think it's the longest viaduct in North America or something, but it's several miles long uh, and runs through this area. Um, you can see it on the map there. Uh, and then the other side was the Seaboard Airline. Um, from here, it went up to Hermitage Yard, which connected to Akka, um, and the RF and P and points up to DC and points north. Um, and then it ran uh, across uh, down here as, um, uh, as it crosses the James River here. This is the Seaboard Airline, the old, the old main line. Um, and there is a connection here. Um, this is a southern, old southern railway branch line, which is still in operation that connects Danville in the west to Richmond and then uh, West Point, Virginia uh, to the northeast of here. Um, so this is actually a really cool area. I work near here. Uh, there's parks. I've walked along this trail, gotten tons of ideas, uh, walked across the, the, the road bridges here, I have sidewalks. I've, I've walked all through here uh, on lunch breaks and whatnot and taken different pictures and, and just seen lots of cool stuff. So um, if I move this way, um, here is Belle Isle Yard. This is Norfolk Southern today, but used to be Southern. Um, so I do operate a train. This is staging for me, but I do operate a train um, that's a transfer run from here uh, to my yard. Um, so there's a connection here. The Seaboard Airline uh, runs south from here, but while we're up here, I wanted to show you this too. And I've, I've got some pictures. Um, this is going to probably be a scratch build for me. Um, but this is a enormous grain elevator that's sitting right next to the river. Um, I don't know exactly how it was situated uh, back in the day, if it was using the river to, to move grain in and out, um, but it definitely was rail served. You can see the old, the old lines in the satellite image here. Um, <coughs> and uh, currently there's the flood wall, um, the Richmond flood wall is right here. Um, that obviously didn't used to be there. Um, so I will um, be modeling this in a future expansion of my of my layout. Um, so the seaboard um, runs south from here um, through some industrial areas. Um, and here is South Yard in the real world. And uh, there's a spur coming off of here that uh, runs uh, on the other side of Interstate 95. Um, past some kind of cool stuff. There's a quarry here. And it ultimately ends up here. Uh, here it is. Uh, this is the deep water terminal. Um, so I was going to model this as well. Um, I'm not sure that any of this is still rail served, but I do think there's an intermodal facility here that, that may or may not be currently operated. But uh, this was a pretty cool uh, area, I thought, uh, to model, you know, the warehouses and kind of a wharf type situation along the river. Um, you know, fairly substantial ships could, you know, come here. And um, in, in my world, um, kind of using a little bit of modeler's license, and I'm going to have some, some produce and some meat and also tobacco coming in and out of this port. Um, and so if I follow the route back up to South Yard here. I think that's where I am. Yep. Um, this is kind of the focus of, of my railroad. Um, so 
that's kind of where things look in the real world. And um, I'll, I'll pivot over and, and show you a schematic of what I came up with to, to model that area. So um, this is South Yard. In, in my world, I moved a whole bunch of stuff that is in and around the river, but not necessarily rail served um, into line side industries along the yard. Um, there is a coal fire power plant that is, you know, probably 10 miles from here. Um, and I moved it to the yard. Um, kind of a generic warehouse will be in there. Um, goods coming and going. Um, I'll have an icing track for those uh, reefers for the, there's a brewery in, in one of the branch lines and and there's also the uh, the deep water terminal uh, warehouse facilities with meat and produce and stuff like that. So I'll have some uh, some steel reefers and, and, and they'll get icing service here um, as the trains are being made up. There's also a water treatment plant in the general vicinity. I don't know that it was ever uh, rail served, but uh, in my world it will be. Um, got space for a rip trap, rip, excuse me, rip track. Um, and some engine facilities. I'm not going to have any buildings or anything, but I will have, you know, tank cars of diesel fuel and maybe covered hoppers of sand uh, parked on the middle track. And then the two outer tracks will be for uh, for locomotives. Um, there's a caboose track in the yard. Um, I did have room for a runaround. Um, there's two arrival departure tracks um, and seven classification tracks. Um, one basically for every train that'll operate in and out of this yard. Um, the, uh, the grain elevator I showed, I, I moved south of the yard and obviously on the map it was north, but just to kind of fit everything in the room, I had to, uh, move it down by the, by the future port expansion. That would be the, the ultimately the DWT, the deep water terminal. Um, but I will have the grain elevator. So there'll be a train that serves basically just the grain elevator and another one that serves the port. Um, I've got, uh, this is totally made up here. This is uh, a branch line in uh, Manchester, which is north of the yard, but south of the river, kind of the area around where I work. A um, couple of made up industries here, uh, a fuel dealer, a scrap yard, uh, a brewery and a soap company. Um, so those will be the, the three uh, online trains plus the local makes four. And then um, I will have a couple of trains run from the north uh, into the yard. Um, there'll be a seaboard airline transfer run from Hermitage Yard. There'll be um, CNO Fulton Yard is very near the, the bridges I showed on the map. Um, if I pivot over here, this is Fulton Yard right here. Um, and I believe there were connection points between the railroads uh, over in the vicinity of, uh, of Main Street Station, maybe just north of it. Um, the CNO and Seaboard could uh, could interchange there. And I think there used to be a yard there uh, a long time ago. Um, so back to the schematic here. So the CNO transfer run, I'm also going to run, uh, like I said, the Southern out of Belle Isle Yard. So that's that's three different trains from the north into the yard. They'll leave cars for the local industries, pick up cars, and head back off staging. Uh, and then one train will come in from the south, another Seaboard airline call it a transfer run or a run from the south, uh, drop off cars in the yard, uh, pick up um, cars that were served in the local industries and take them back south. Um, so I said seven tracks, I actually named eight trains, but I'm treating the two trains that will go that will serve the port and the grain elevator will fit on one of these tracks. Um, to kind of fold this into the room, it's in a room over a garage. So this is how I kind of folded the uh, the layout to fit. Um, oh, back to the schematic real quick. There is a continuous run connection I'm indicating here um, that runs through staging. Um, so to get it into the room, um, there's a wall basically that runs on the left side, across the top, and down the right side. And then this section here is across an, op an open area. Um, so I've got the backdrop that comes down and comes across this way and then a drop gate across staging um, to get into the area. So it's basically around the walls with one section that, that pops across the, uh, the opening to the room. Um, sorry, this is upside down. I <laughs> literally snipped it out of here and, and rotated it to, to show how it, how it fit into the, into the, uh, into the space. But uh, this was the original layout 
um, it was a published track plan in, in Model Railroader. There was an article um, about making a layout in a weekend. Um, obviously, I've been working on it for several years, and it's grown a bunch. But uh, the original uh, track plan, I thought, was, was pretty cool. Uh, it was a shelf layout. Um, and the construction methods the guy used um, was an 18-inch bifold door that you fold. And so the table is 18 inches wide, and then the other piece of the door you fold up at 90 degrees, and that becomes your backdrop. Um, so I thought that was a pretty cool way to kind of just get something going. And since then, I've expanded into all the rest of this. Um, so that's kind of uh, how I fit uh, the layout into the space. Uh, this area is largely scenic, and I've been kind of working my way up this way. Um, literally just in the last week or two, um, I finished the drop gate area and this end of staging to complete the, the circuit. Um, and then uh, future state in this corner area here is where that port will go. Um, still sort of thinking through what will fit in the space. Um, but I, I imagine probably like a six car train, five to six cars uh, in and out of that port. So uh, just wanted to kind of give an overview of, of um, kind of what things are based on and sort of the compression uh, that had to be done and, and how you take a schematic like that, or at least how I took a schematic like this and folded it into the space uh, to fit into the room. It's roughly a, a 12 by 14 room. Um, so that's just a little little piece of uh, where the inspiration came from um, and sort of how I, you know, came up with it and came up with the plan and, and, and laid everything together. So um, I haven't done a full operating session yet. I'm still kind of working through how I want to uh, organize that. I'm probably going to use car cards and, and way bills to start with. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping uh, at the end of the month here my dad's supposed to come up uh, – and uh and we'll operate this thing uh, and that'll be our first session with more than just uh this manchester area uh built so we'll we'll run that train but we'll also have some yard operations we'll have trains coming in and out of staging probably run the grain elevator turn and then obviously you've got the yard local here too so probably going to keep us busy for longer than the 45 minutes that uh that this used to be so looking forward to that um that's all i had for uh for this one I uh, just kind of wanted to show you guys um, what everything really looked like, and uh, uh, I'll probably put something else out again uh, later in the week. Um, also, I'm, just to let everybody know, I'm going to be on the uh, uh, Who's Big Bill Talking To tomorrow. On, uh, I think it's tomorrow night. Uh, that's Wednesday, June 10th at 9 Eastern. Um, so I'm going to be on, on that show and, and talk to Bill about the layout, and um, I yeah, hope you guys uh, are able to tune in and, and, and check that out. So until then, I'll talk to you later.